Okay, so let's make some silver thiosulfate. Uh, first up is our equipment. You're going to need some kind of a graduated cylinder or measuring device. Uh, the more accurate, the better. However, uh, if it's close enough, it's close enough. Next, you're going to need two jars. I use the 32 ounce. I think that's a quart. I could be wrong. Uh, mason jars uh, with lids. Uh, new, old, doesn't matter. Um, next up is your sprayer. For the sprayer, you can have any size or type. They're all acceptable uh, as long as they can get a uh, non-viscous fluid, uh, much like water, because that's most of what's in it. Uh, to flow out the nozzle and spray into a spread spray pattern, you're fine. Uh, I actually started out with a cheap little plastic one that only held about 50 milliliters when I did my first run. Um, and I ended up using enough uh, silver thiol sulfate over time uh, that it just, frankly, it was a good investment uh, at a certain point after a couple years of, of uh, using it reliably. Uh, that I felt like I needed to upgrade to glass bottles into the 500 milliliter because it makes it easier to measure it out. Um, and finally, our scale. Next up, we have our ingredients. The first one is going to be your sodium. The first one is going to be your sodium thiosulfate. You're going to need more of it than you need of the silver nitrate. This is what a uh, approximate weight of a similar uh, metal salt came out to for the same weight to give you some idea of how much you're looking for. And then this is one that's got the sodium thiol sulfate in it that's actually already pre-packed uh, and weighed out because it's going to uh, one of my friends uh, very far south of us uh, to help him out because uh, part of this is teaching him and everybody in the community how to do this easily and simply with the right calculations. Then we have our silver nitrate which as you can see there's quite a bit less of that much smaller vial. I'll set that one over there because that one's going uh, with the first one for the full combination uh, so that my friend can make his own and follow along with you guys with this video. So let's go ahead and set those out of the side because we won't be using those today. Just for kind of a size reference, uh, the normal seed cases we send out are about that big. There's really not a whole lot to it uh, for the amount of stock solution you get. And those two little vials plus a whole bunch of distilled water uh, is going to result in having uh, a thousand milliliters, which you will need a thousand milliliter container. That's the the one other piece of equipment you're going to want. I'm actually going to pull mine out of the fridge right now. <clears throat> That's it right there. All I did was got a uh, a glass thousand milliliter uh, jar with cap uh, online. Made the mistake of getting. Uh, a type of cap that isn't uh, secured with a, a washer, a rubber washer or a uh, uh, poly washer inside of it. Uh, and so when I shook it, which you're going to end up having to do, um, it ended up leaking. So if you see the ones with the hard plastic tops, stay away from those. The reason that you see it's wrapped in foil all the way around and then it's capped off because again, the top uh, didn't work right. And you can see this is the wide mouth top with the uh, coarse uh, thread. Stay away from those. Uh, so my solution to that was just to uh, cut up a plastic vegetable bag from the grocery store, a couple little slices of that, <clears throat> lay that over the top, rubber band that down with a little more foil. Uh, and the reason you do that is because uh, light and heat uh, light and heat uh, combined uh, of any kind uh, can cause the uh, silver to precipitate out of the solution. 
um, and the silver is the active component that we're actually after. Um, for the solution to work, the silver needs to stay in the solution and not precipitate it out. Uh, and so I cover the whole thing after the plastic uh, with the tin foil uh, to help reduce that uh, precipitation out of the solution. So we've got all our stuff here. Um, one word about water. Uh, you're going to want to get a gallon of it. Uh, you're not going to use it all, but get a gallon. Um, it is always possible you might mess up one uh, attempt at a single uh, you know, solution making in this in the two parts. Uh, you'll have to throw it out, uh, which you can actually just wash it down the sink. Uh, for a jar this size, if you messed up one part of it, uh, you'd want to wash about 10 times as much water. Uh, so that's probably running your faucet for, I'd say, 30, 45 seconds should do it. Anywhere in there will be fine. Uh, and that's not just to make it not poisonous to you. That's to make it just completely inert in those concentrations within the water system as well. Uh, and the same goes for uh, both components. The reason we want distilled water specifically, and you don't want to get any other kind, um, they can have additive processes where they filter it or do whatever other weird stuff they want to do to it. Uh, but first and foremost, it has to be distilled. The reason for that is in the distillation process, it separates out uh, all of the residual salts in the water. Because we're adding metal salts to the water, we need it to not have to compete or possibly even react uh, with the metal salts that are still in a water that hasn't been distilled. Um, you can actually tell, if you want to do a quick experiment, when you make one solution, uh, if you do it with water out of the tap and just use that and then mix the other one up with distilled water and you'll see that when you combine just a little bit, you don't want to waste a lot, just a little bit of the two together uh, in another container that's going to go down the wash, um, you'll notice that the, the combination of the distilled water with the faucet water just the residual salts that are in that faucet water is going to be enough for you to actually see a, uh, a color shift from clear to brown uh, in that water. And yet, if you take the tap water one, throw it out, wash it down, clean it out real well with soap and water, dry it off, because you, you want to make sure you don't have any of those salts on the glass still, and then you put distilled water in it, mix that one up again, and now do the same experiment to see whether or not there's any kind of a reaction. Because the, what that brown signifies is actually a reaction between uh, the silver and other uh, salts that are residual in the water. And just that small amount that are in that one jar is enough to make it actually do a brown shift. So you always want to use distilled water. As for where to get your chemicals, uh, the silver nitrate uh, can be purchased online uh, as well as the sodium uh, thiosulfate. Uh, we'll talk about one of the, uh, the minor quirks of purchasing the sodium thiosulfate in a second here. Uh, but the silver nitrate I bought 10 grams of it pretty inexpensively. Uh, I don't think it cost me more than maybe $15. And I purchased that 10 years ago. And I'm just barely down to my last gram or less. Um, it's lasted me that long. So 10 grams should do you fine. Um, and then with the sodium thiosulfate, when you purchase that, there's two forms you can actually purchase it in. Um, and 
one of them is as an anhydrous or without water form. The other is pentahydrate, which stands for five waters. You'll notice that there's a, uh, a gram mole shift. So this stuff is going to be heavier than this stuff, which makes sense since it's actually got five water molecules uh, attached to it. Um, and you get quite a shift too. Now, when I purchased mine, uh, I decided that a smaller quantity, since I was having to use quite a bit more of it than you are the silver nitrate, that's, uh, that's easily a magnitude shift in difference uh, between the two weights needed. And then adding in an even heavier molecule told me that I was going to have to be storing an even larger bottle uh, with a much larger quantity where I was basically purchasing water. Um, wanting one that would store longer without issues, uh, I went ahead and got the anhydrous. Um, I think most people actually do that. And I purchased both of them at the science company, uh, which I've actually not purchased a single thing from them since then. Uh, and I'm still giving them credit uh, for having sold me an exceptional product because 10 years later, and these things are, both of these are still kicking strong and effective. Uh, I've continued to use them to make uh, feminized seeds and they've continued to work with the same potency uh, that they started out with. Um, and all I've done is left them on top of a cool fridge uh, out of the light for that entire time. Uh, so those will store for pretty much forever. Uh, now, I don't actually need any sodium thiosulfate sulfate right now because, as you see, I still have a rather large container. Uh, you Well, actually, you can't see. Uh, and you know what? I think after I put the foil on, I actually taped it up with uh, packing tape, just a couple rounds just to keep its shape uh, so it wouldn't peel off. So that's probably another good little tip there, too. Uh, but I can feel the weight from kind of shaking it. That's probably about halfway full still. So I'm going to go ahead and get that back into the fridge. Uh, I don't know if it needs to be mentioned, but I'll mention it anyways. Uh, keep children, small people, uh, or irresponsible adults. Um, we care about even them. Uh, make sure you keep them away from that um, because it should not be uh, imbibed. Uh, it should not be poured on you in that concentration. Nobody should be messing with it. At that concentration, uh, it absolutely could poison you to death. Um, so make sure you keep that labeled if necessary, uh, locked up if necessary, whatever you got to do. Even though I don't need any sodium thiosulfate right now, uh, we're going to go ahead and mix up our uh, pseudo batch here with our other two replacement ingredients uh, because I want you guys to be able to see the actual process as I do it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way to make sure that in my clumsiness uh, I don't end up knocking them over and breaking them. And we'll go ahead and get started. So turn the scale on. Make sure it's set to grams from the silver nitrate for making one liter of a concentrated solution or stock solution. We need, let's see if we've got it there, 0 0.8 grams of silver nitrate. close. So it's kind of floating. It's an okay scale. Um, looks like between 0.75 and 0.78, somewhere in there. Let, let's say it doesn't even go that high. Let's say it goes 0.72. Call it good. This doesn't need to be an absolutely uh, perfect combination of one molecule uh, of silver nitrate exchanging with one molecule of sodium thiosulfate. That doesn't need to happen. There's going to naturally be 
a back and forth shift of, of trading off bonds and whatnot, because that's how uh, metal salts and ionic bonding works within water's structures. Um, so it, it's not required that it be exact. Uh, just like if it only goes up to uh, 0.72, it can also go up to 8.8. .8. That's fine. Now, if you're getting a little outside of that range, you're going to want to try to very gently pinch out just enough to bring it back into range. Uh, but while this is science, it's not necessary to be exact. Uh, there was actually a couple years there where I used a solution that was uh, quite a bit out of range. Uh, and it still worked. Uh, it wasn't nearly as strong or as effective as the formula I use now that's actually got the proper uh, molar ratio between the two items. Um, but it still worked. So now that we've got that, and that's our silver nitrate, we're going to go ahead and put that in our first jar. You're going to want to grab, if you are using mason jars like this, you're going to want to grab a Sharpie or something that's going to be semi-permanent. Uh, it, however you do it, it's going to need to be waterproof in some way. Um, because if you put any kind of a paper label on it, our next steps are absolutely going to obliterate it. Um, so we've got our silver nitrate. Now, we're going to go ahead and mix that one up because that way... Once it's done and we move on to the next one, this one can only be sodium thiosulfate. And so that one will go in there. Uh, that way you're not getting it mixed up. Now, the great thing is, because we're only using a two part, if you do mix it up, and as long as only one salt goes in each jar, you're getting equal volumes of water in each one, and then that's being combined in those equal volumes. So even if you mess it up, it's still going to work. You didn't mess it up. Uh, so just to get on with this part, I'm actually going to skip the mixing of this one. And when we uh, go to mixing this one, we're going to cut away and come back. So for this one here, we want 500 milliliters of distilled water. Our graduated cylinder. We're just going to fill it all the way up to 100, or thereabouts. Doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to come back after I've done this five times. Okay, we're back. We have 500 milliliters of water distilled in our first jar, and we've got our silver nitrate in there. You're going to want to kind of agitate each one, um, and then by magic, we have our metal salts, and again, we have our second one prepared. Now on this one, because the sodium thiosulfate crystals are much larger uh, and therefore have less uh, surface area, uh, larger surface area dissolves more quickly like the silver nitrate. Uh, less surface area like the larger crystals will dissolve more slowly. Yeah. And now we have perfectly clear solution. So we've got our silver nitrate, part A, and your sodium thiosulfate, part B. And how I started out doing this 
uh, because all I had were two mason jars, is when I got to this stage, I would slowly and carefully pour one into the other until I got about an inch from the top. It would usually be at this stage a few times, uh, I hate to admit, uh, that the, the water would start to turn brown, um, kind of a almost a copper brown or bronze brown. Um, and I knew something was wrong. I rechecked my instructions. I finally figured out that uh, you had to have distilled water. Now, if you do have distilled water, then you end up with a clear solution even after combining the two. You won't get a, a visible reaction. Uh, there will be a reaction taking place, you just won't see it. Um, so, right about there, and then very, very carefully, pour it back over, and I'd repeat this step as long as I felt I needed to, which was usually maybe a minute, two minutes tops, so five or six times. Uh, and I had confidence that it was thoroughly mixed. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and get it to mm, about even. We'll assume that, that we thoroughly combined the two. Now you've got two parts combined as one. This is no longer silver nitrate and sodium thiosulfate as a major component. It is now silver thiosulfate, AKA STS. And this is ready to use in creating your, uh, your final solution, your working solution. This is gonna be your stock solution. You're gonna to wanna to label it as that. Uh, again, with a Sharpie or something like that, just right on the side of it, stock. And then under that, you're gonna to wanna to put the date and then you're gonna to wanna to foil the whole thing. Now, this is gonna kinda of sound dumb, uh, but I want you to do the exact same writing a second time on the outside of the foil or the tape or whatever so that you have uh, repeated notations. The reason for that is sometimes the tape won't stick properly uh, that you put around the outside and the foil over time, it gets hit, condiments in and out, wherever it is. Uh, it'll end up peeling, and if it's only on the outside, you'll never know what it was. You'll be trying to piece it together from some crumpled mess. Trust me, avoid the stress. Um, and so you put it on the inside. If you put it on the inside, though, you always have a chance uh, that while you're doing this whole process that you get enough water accumulated up on your uh, hands or on the foil that when you're pressing all the foil up around it, uh, that you're going to end up accidentally rubbing the words off from inside. So double up, double your chances. Uh, you'll thank me later. The second one, oh, and go ahead and uh, after you foiled that all the way up, uh, just like you saw my bottle, um, go ahead and put it in the fridge uh, somewhere out of the way, somewhere where kids aren't going to get to it, or again, irresponsible adults. Um, Hey, some of us are those. Now that you've got this stock solution set aside and properly labeled in the fridge out of the way, we're going to take the other one because it's a stock solution and we want to make some finished solution. We're going to want our spray bottle. We're going to want our stock solution, our measuring device, and more water. Now on this part, we're going to do a 1 to 9 dilution. So what I first do is I get my stock solution and my measuring device. I determine how many milliliters are in my bottle. Uh, luckily, I actually did this measuring a long time ago and wrote it in, uh, I think, paint pen on the side. But hey, it's still working. Uh, and these have been washed a lot. Uh, so you're going to measure out, you're basically going to measure out 100 milliliters at a time and pour it in until you get to about the level uh, 
where you want to be working at uh, as far as a, a good level in this. Um, at that point, you'll know how many milliliters you're planning on putting this uh, into the, the sprayer. You're going to measure out one tenth of whatever that total was. So for me, one tenth of 500 milliliters is 50 milliliters. So I'll need 50 milliliters of stock solution. And you want to be as close as you can. But you know what? If you're a little shy or a little over, it doesn't matter. So I'm at about 47. Let's call that good. So I would pour that into here. Uh, I believe mine actually have, oh, you know what? We lucked out. I just used up all the uh, STS that's in this and I need to wash it anyways. And it'll make a good example of something else I want to show you. So we'll pour that part in. And then the rest, or 450 milliliters, needs to be water. So I'll go ahead and measure out 100 milliliters. And by magic, we've already gotten 400 milliliters in. Now, we're going to add the last 50. Very carefully. Eh, close enough. Imagine with me that it's all full up. and we're ready to use the solution at this stage. For this container, you're gonna to wanna to have it oil wrapped uh, and you're gonna to wanna to keep it in the fridge or in a cool place at very least. Uh, I actually don't usually keep this in the fridge, uh, but I've got a cool enough dark place uh, and with the amber, it keeps the, uh, the most active light rays out of it. Uh, so I've, I've found good success even with the, the amber, again, one of the reasons I absolutely love this stuff is even if you mess up, it will probably still work. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this away. This is our stock solution. We're now done with this part of the stock solution. We already put the other part away. We're going to write that this is stock solution STS and the date. Oil wrap it, same thing again, tape it, make sure it's in the fridge and out of the light, and we're all done with that now. And this is exactly how much you're going to end up with, with just those small amounts of uh, metal salts. So you are going to end up with, I hate to say it, 10 years supply. Now. You're asking yourself the same thing I asked myself a long time ago, which is, can't we downsize this? That seems like a major waste of chemicals. I don't know if I'm okay with this. And what I basically figured out was, because you are already working at 0.8 grams, so not even one gram, a fraction of a gram, that when you cut this amount in half so that you only end up with one quart, you're down to 0.4 and you're you're at a stage where with most cheap scales you're outside the range of their accuracy they are easily three to four uh, tenths of a gram over or under what you think they are what they're telling you um, you really have to get a really pricey high dollar scale and it has to be calibrated recently if you're actually going to get the kind of measurements that you need for cutting this recipe in half. So if you do see this recipe out there elsewhere, which you probably will, um, this is why we have to make so much. It's unfortunate, but there it is. Um, so you've got that put away. This through the powers of imagination is full. We're gonna go take our sprayer top and we're gonna put it on and we're ready to use it. 
once we get it oil wrapped and everything, or if you get amber. Uh, I went with glass because it's very non-reactive with uh, most metal salts, uh, and the amber keeps the, uh, the light out of it pretty well. But we can't do that yet because as we go to put the nozzle on, we notice that it's got precipitate on it. Now, we want as little precipitate on the inside of the glass or container and uh, this nozzle hose um, because the more precipitate that we have that resides within the solution, the more of it is capable of causing a crystallization reaction uh, with the, uh, the silver that's in the solution. So you'll literally, by having this stuff dirty, this will last less time until you have to throw it out because it's not effective anymore. Now, for these, I usually don't keep them for more than six months to a year. Honestly, around a year usually, because about once a year I go through all my gross stuff just, just because that's what I do, it's habit now, um, and double check everything and make sure that it's not more than a year old, unless, you know, it's something like a, a fermented plant juice or fermented uh, fruit juice or something, one of those types of things where you're dealing with the, the KNF stuff, in which case they're supposed to age. Don't ever throw them out, just use them. Uh, start to see precipitate. Uh, starting to form on the inside of your container and if, if you have a solid plastic one or something like that every once in a while you're gonna want to actually tip it up and look down into it to see whether or not you're getting any basically crud on the side of it uh, in which case soap and warm water uh, and some kind of a brush you're gonna need something that's capable of, of softly scraping that stuff off it um, usually a sponge won't work but any of the non-metallic abrasives or uh, brushes uh, usually work just fine, so anything you can get down in there. Uh, I had one time where uh, I didn't have access to a sink and I had one of these and I needed, I needed to do the, uh, the pour over and to clean it I basically just ripped up a, a little rag shred and grabbed a stick off a tree and went poking around in there until it looked like it was a lot less than it started out. Um, and then I used it. Uh, clean this as well, uh, which I'll actually do after this video. Uh, and with just soap and water, uh, it'll come back to where it's almost clear or whatever uh, properties it had before. Uh, so because I still need to clean out this whole container since we put uh, other salts, which I definitely don't want to leave in there because they would react with what we're actually after, which is the silver thiol sulfate. Uh, so we're all ready to go with that one. Um, it's all foil wrapped. We're going to keep it in a cool place. We're going to check it after a year. We're going to chuck it after a year, probably. Um, honestly, I usually do. I usually remember to as well. Uh, but I have had a couple years where I went a year and six months before I chucked it out. And I honestly didn't have any... Uh, reduction in the effectiveness of it because at that time I was using the uh, distilled water. Uh, so I'm going to set that aside because uh, we're all done with that one. Um, and we're going to go into a um, couple of things. Uh, one is we're going to go into identifying the difference between the males and females.